So today we have over 80 cooperators here, cooperative pioneers, workers, owners, uh, trade unionists, policymakers, uh, researchers, designers, technologists, activists from over 20 countries. And here in, for these two days at the majestic uh, Humboldt University and then for four days online. And in the name of the Platform Co-op Consortium, the Institute uh, for Ecological Economy Research and the Wetzel uh, B, the you know, Social Science Center Berlin, we welcome each and one of you to the new Common Sense. And Jonas Pension for the Institute for the Ecolo uh, Ecological Economy Research has thanked our partners already uh, and our collaborators and uh, the live stream began. But I also have to add a little bit more of this uh, and I'm sure you will be all very excited to hear some more names and acknowledgements. Uh, but this is how we have to go through the beginning of this uh, event. So I want to extend uh, my gratitude to the following organizations for their support of experiments with the digital cooperatives. I'm talking about the members of the PCC Circle for Cooperators. And without you, there would be no us. And that sounds like a mouthful, but it's really true. Uh, and so allow me to pay tribute to these organizations by swiftly reading their names. So it's the Institute for Technology and Society of Rio de Janeiro, Cooperatives UK, Cotabo, the National Cooperative Business Association, Fondazione Centro Studi Doc, uh, the Organization of Brazilian Co-ops, uh, OCB, Cooperatives for a Better World, United Healthcare Workers, so the SEIU, Colab Cooperative, Faber Co-op, La Co-op de Commun, uh, Fair BNB, Needsmap, Democracy at Work Institute, Smart, the DSIS Network, and Start.coop. So, and we would also like to thank everyone on the PCC Council of Advisors. It's too many names to read them here, but hopefully, so you see them briefly behind me. And so, a wholehearted thank you for their, uh, you know, years of work. And of course, also a wholehearted thank you to Humboldt University for providing us with these with these rooms. I think Jonas has already mentioned that, but also to the governing mayor of Berlin who actually visited us at the new school not so long ago, and the Senate Chancellery for Higher Education and Research for providing financial support. I would also like to highlight uh, Mondragon, which, uh, and here particularly Anna Aguirre, Inigo uh, Landazabal, right, and uh, Jose Marie uh, Monestario. I know I left out the middle names, I, you forgive me. Uh, so let's see where you are. Can you raise your hands? Come on, okay, excellent. And so together, since last year in April, we uh, taught over 1,051 students together from 57 countries. Uh, Anna, I never met in person. We just met for the first time uh, just a few minutes ago. And uh, so we worked with 47 local organizations uh, over those years, uh, almost every day together, and uh, it's been an intense ride. And as Jose Marie would always say, uh, this is only the beginning, right? And so, of course, uh, when you think about scale and what becomes conceivable, I think in the most of, uh, in the midst of this great economic uh, uncertainty, uh, previously unthinkable changes uh, become possible. And I think this course is a testament to that, right? So now we would uh, hear. Uh, from Aman Badia, my colleague, but he's actually held up at the Indian Embassy, uh, my valued uh, PCC colleague, uh, but then we will hear from Christine Gerber uh, from the WZB and then again from Jonas, right? So um, will, you, will one of you take on Aman's part? I am, I am taking on Aman's part. I obviously cannot replace him, but he will be here with us later tonight, so um, we hope he will be here soon. We will now start with the content, what we all came for. So platforms are more important than ever before, and this is only increasing. Even when Facebook now rebrands itself as Meta to pretend that it acts in a market brimming with competitors, we know that this is not the case. Market power is increasing, and the big winners of the COVID pandemic were these digital platforms. And these platforms, they fundamentally change how we go about our lives. They do not emerge or continue in a vacuum. To the contrary, structural issues of inequality, 
racist and communal violence, gender and class-based exploitation, they are oftentimes reproduced and exacerbated through platformization. Most of us have an alienated relation to the internet. We don't have a say in how it's run. Privatization and concentration of power in a few hands make it such that there's almost no accountability towards the platforms that we use daily. But, 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 now it's working. But there are alternatives, of course, which is why we're here today. They are still scattered, but they show us how we can relate to platforms differently, building on the rich lineage of social movements, of community ownership, and of progressive struggles. They are making democracy commonplace in the workplace and beyond that. They scale equality and they contribute to the commons rather than just destroying our environment. So this conference is a gathering of people, people who not only show us that an alternative to the big tech consolidated universe is possible, but that it's already on its way. So the goal of this event today and tomorrow and next week in the virtual sessions is to assess how platforms, platform cooperatives have responded to the pandemic, to analyze inhibiting and supportive policies and to discuss experiments with data cooperatives, with token systems and with crypto networks, for example. But this is not just another PCC conference. The pandemic has really heightened the urgency for this ecosystem. We need to act decisively, quickly. We need to collaborate and we need to consolidate. Insights, data, sources of finance, business models, policy recommendations and research. Because this cannot wait. There are people who are suffering. And if we want a digital economy that works for us, then we need to make platform co-ops common sense. So in this sense, we want to make the new common sense a platform, a platform for people to connect, to reconnect. We want to make it a platform for us to understand how this ecosystem has coped with the pandemic and under these pandemic conditions. And we want this to be a platform to identify collectively what the next steps are that we need to take in order to move us towards a cooperative digital economy. So what's on the net menu for the next days? We will learn about 4,000 taxi drivers in New York taking on Lyft. We will learn about Circles, a people-powered money system that hopes to promote local economy. And we will ask how Europe can defend autonomy, democracy, sustainability and self-determination in the digital economy. So we will learn about a policy toolbox from municipal policymakers who want to support platform co-ops. We will learn how co-ops uh, run organizations democratically across borders. And we will ask what kind of institutions are able to create meaningful relationships between platform cooperatives. We will examine extractive labor platforms, first of all. You know, why do people use these sites and uh, what do they expect? We will ask, can co-ops reduce socioeconomic uh, inequality? Can they help us fight racism and uh, establish a commun uh, and, and communal violence, gender and class-based exploitation? We will ask if the history of cooperative governance can meaningfully inspire experiments with bottom-up data governance. And we will ask if we can envision cooperative data trusts or, uh, and look at early ex uh, examples of that, right? So what's first on our menu? Well, first things first. Well, tonight, what we will do is we will draw a rough sketch of what the cooperative digital economy could look like. Francesca Bria, just arrived, welcome Francesca, uh, will discuss with us how to envision how to implement data sovereignty and she will discuss with us which role European policy could play in putting technology to work for the green transition. And then we will hear from Trevor Scholz afterwards. And Trevor will, will bring us closer to the basics. What are platform co-ops? Because not everyone might know in the live stream or here in the room. And he will ask, well, what can they contribute? And what could they contribute also to a post-pandemic future? 
And then afterwards, we will go on the ground and we will hear from two platform co-ops that have experienced a big, big transformation and a big, big growth in the past year against all odds. On one hand, we will hear from the Drivers Cooperative, a, uh, a cooperative from New York City that aims to create the 100% worker-owned, ride-sharing company of the future. And we will hear from Circles, a people-powered money system that wants to strengthen the local economy in your community. And then afterwards, we will cap off the night with a performance lecture by the Berlin-based collective Treuhand Techno. Treuhand Techno explores the connections between the transformations that took place in the 1990s in Eastern Germany, and they will explore that relation, how this relates to the rise and the emergence of the subculture of techno. Because how could we ever put on an event in Berlin which does not bring together labor history and techno? So this is a promise. And of course, these experiences from back then are relevant today more than ever before, because today we have to rethink how we work and how we live. And we hope to be able to draw on this experience from back then. OK, but with no further ado, I thank you very much. Before we start with the keynotes, however, I would like to welcome two people to the stage. The first person that I would like to introduce and then welcome is Inigo Albisuri Landazabal. Inigo, it's great to have you here. I will introduce you and then you can come up. Inigo has spent his entire career working in the various cooperatives of Mondragon Corporation. If some of you don't know what Mondragon Corporation is, let me tell you. Well, Mondragon is the largest cooperative in the world and it brings together more than 80,000 people. And Inigo's work has took him from Spain to Italy, to Mexico, to the US, and to China. And presently, Inigo is the vice president of Mondragon, and he primarily focuses on communication and public affairs. But next to his work with Mondragon, Inigo is also the president of CICOPA, the International Organization of Industry and Service Cooperatives. So it's, it's an enormous pleasure for us to have you here today, Inigo, and we look forward to your welcoming as well. But before I welcome you to the stage, I also want to welcome another person that will speak right after you, and that is Mary Watson. Mary is here in front. Mary is executive dean of the Schools of Public Engagement at the New School in New York City. And in this role, she oversees the New School's founding division, and she's advancing its innovative approaches to action-oriented, engaged learning globally. Mary is a global leader in university networks, such as the Globally Responsible Leadership Initiative and the Ashoka Changemaker Campus Initiative. Mary, it's amazing that you made, all the, that you made this trip all the way from the US here, and we can't wait to hear from you. And with this, I want to hand over the mic to Inigo. Inigo, I would like to welcome you to the stage for your welcoming words. Thank you very much. Hello. OK, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here with you all, finally. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to all the people that have been working so hard in the organization of this event, that finally here we are. And uh, it's a special pleasure, I have to say, because we are in the humble uh, university. So I was kidding. Uh, uh, because of uh, my origin, uh, I'm Basque, uh, and I live in Guernica. A lot of people know Guernica because of, uh, of a painting of, of Picasso, and in Guernica, uh, probably in the, in the most beautiful park that we have, we have an statue in honor to the memory of Humboldt. Because Humboldt, before uh, founding this university, that is the oldest one in Berlin, traveled to Basque Country. And thanks to, to, to Humboldt, a lot of people understood that there was a crazy people called Basque with a very, very uh, ancient habits. And one of them was the language. And another one was uh, a kind of uh, making decisions by voting, OK? So from then to now is what we have cooperative. So thank you uh, to you to you all. For me, um, is is a great pleasure, 
I think that we are going to have the opportunity of talking of so many interesting things, okay? And what is in, is in place is our, is our future, okay? Not only the future of, uh, of the cooperatives, okay? But also the future of the global world. So I am really excited about the, the different topics that we are going to talk. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you all here and to see so many, so many friends. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to those of you on the live stream. I'm Mary Watson, and I'm representing the New School um, in opening this conference. Two years ago, nearly, um, we homed this conference in New York City in the New School's campus, and some of you have mentioned to me tonight that the very last time you traveled internationally was actually to that conference. And so here we are again. I see a show of hands. There's a lot of folks who were now reuniting uh, again here in Berlin, Berlin in a different moment. So welcome back to you all. Um, happy to turn over the um, administration and operation of this conference to, to Humboldt University today and to the IOW and the WZB and, and other Mondragon and other organizers. I think this is going to be a fantastic moment. So two years ago, we were thinking about something different. We were thinking that there was a moment in society where the situation was very dire, that we really needed to think about new ways to address things like the inequality and wealth, the wealth that was being aggregated by individuals, especially in the technology world. We were thinking about the complications of race and identity and what was happening in the various social movements around the world, and we were worried about climate change. How we are two years later, with a very unexpected period in the interim. Because things have indeed, as it seemed, gotten worse. Um, and I, um, I really appreciate in the opening comments hearing that that means that these kinds of initiatives are even more important than ever. So I don't know if you've been following the COP26 um, discussions uh, in the last few days, but it looks like they're not gonna make the minimum standards to help us to address the climate change. Um, it looks like we still have even more tremendous rapid wealth disparities in the aftermath of the COVID dilemma. My own personal work is on human rights and uh, supply chains in global fashion, and we've seen what's happened in the backing up of ports in the global economy. And race and uh, wealth outcomes have not improved. So we need all of us in this room and all of you on the live stream, and we need all of a lot of other people who don't even know what cooperatives are. So I'll, I'll brag for a moment about the New School because we are the founding home of the PCC and our, our own Trevor Schultz, um, who you met earlier and we'll hear a lot about again, and most of you in this room have known for years, um, did a Ted Monterey talk. Uh, less than two weeks ago it was posted to the internet. And in that two week period, and here's the title, Stuck in the Gig Economy, Stuck in the Gig Economy, Try Platform Cooperatives Instead. In the two weeks since that's been posted, more than 650,000 people have viewed Trevor's video. So the interest of being stuck in the world that we're stuck in and moving forward is accelerating rapidly. So what's our role here today? It, our role um, as universities, as the new school founded in 1919 on an anti-war, pro-peace, and pro-inclusion agenda, need to follow the example of places like Mondragon University and the ways in which they've actually put into place a cooperative um, initiative that actually has been world-changing. We need to think about how we can advance and accelerate the PCC. Um, more partners, more platforms, more courses, more scaling. How do we actually scale this to a, a, larger, a larger level? We need to think about how we use our own institutional resources and power to form new partnerships to expand the understanding of cooperatives and to support that um, work that's going on here today. And then finally, I think we really need to lift up the public knowledge of the collaborative, co collaborative manner and figure out a way to advance cooperative leadership. If you think about most universities, and Mondragon aside, uh, the, nearly 25% of American students, for example, study business or organizations as undergraduates. And how many of those students learn about cooperatives as a form of organizing? The answer is very few. So at the new school, we've put into place a new curriculum that actually brings this model into students' mindsets. We want cooperatives to be understood, not just by those who already are doing cooperatives, not by those who need cooperatives, by, but all those who are learning about organizations and institutions to know that this is a legitimate, important, and a 
central model moving forward. So I welcome you um, to um, this event. Uh, I'll do a brief call out to Caroline Woodard from art.coop, who will be uh, doing a, um, a session tomorrow. She uh, convened a center at the New Schools Vera List Center um, last week, a conversation about cooperatives in the um, art arena. This is everywhere. It's a small world. We're interconnected. But it's not just us. We need to find a way to get to everyone. So thank you.